you are CUBE alumni. Live from Silicon Valley, it's the CUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Google Next 2017. I have a lot of conversations as how enterprises are really you know, grappling with cloud, uh, you know, the move from on-premises to public cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, all those pieces in between. Happy to welcome the program a first time guest, uh, Paul Scott Murphy, who's the Vice President of Product Management at Wandisco. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks very much. It's great to be here and uh, join you on the program. All right, so, so uh, you know, Paul, you know, I th think a lot of our audience probably is familiar with Wandisco. We, we've had, uh, you know, you, many of your executives on, uh, you know, really dug into your environment for, you know, the last few years. Usually see you guys at a lot of, uh, not only the big data shows, uh, you know, uh, we've got Strata coming up next week. Uh, last time I did an interview with you guys was at AWS reInvent. Um, so, you know, the, you know, WAN, replication, data, all those things put together, you've got a big bucket of big data in cloud. Um, tell us a little bit about kind of your, your background, your role uh, at the company. Okay, so I've been at Wandisco now for about two and a half years. I previously worked for Tipco Software okay. for a decade, sure. uh, working out of Asia Pacific, held the CTO role there for APJ, and joined Wandisco two and a half years ago, uh, just as we were entering into the big data market with our replication capabilities. Uh, I now run product management for the company and work out of our headquarters here in the Bay Area. Great. Uh, and connect with us, you know, what you guys are doing at Google, what's the conversations you're having uh, with, with customers that are attending. Yeah, so Google is definitely one of the uh, key strategic partners for Wandisco, uh, obviously particularly in the cloud space for us. Uh, we're hosting a booth there for the conference and uh, using that as an opportunity to speak to uh, other vendors and the customers that we have attending the Google conference particularly around what we're doing for replication uh, between on-premises and cloud environments and how we support uh, Google Cloud Data Proc and Google Cloud Storage as well. Yeah, c can you help unpack for us a little bit, you know, where are your customers? Give us, you know, a typical customer. Is it, you know, they're saying, hey, you know, I, I want to start using this cloud stuff. You know, how are they, you know, figuring out what applications stay on-premises, what goes to the public cloud, and that, that data piece is, you know, a, a, a challenging thing. You know, moving data is, is not easy. There's a whole data gravity piece that fits into it. Maybe, maybe you can help walk us through some of those scenarios. Yeah, as we're progressing the technology, uh, we're certainly finding a broader and broader range of customers uh, getting interested in what they can do around data replication. Uh, the sorts of organizations that we deal with primarily are those who are looking to leverage uh, both on-premises and cloud infrastructure, uh, or those who are moving from a situation where they've been uh, toying with these environments and moving into production-ready scenarios where the demands of enterprise-level SLAs or availability or uh, the needs around disaster recovery, uh, backup and migration use cases become a lot more dominant for them. Uh, the organizations that we work with, uh, typically they are larger organizations. Uh, we deal a lot with retail, with financial services, in telecommunications, uh, with research institutions as well, uh, all of whom have uh, larger needs around taking advantage of cloud infrastructure. Of course, they all share the same challenge of the availability of their data, uh, where it's sourced from isn't always necessarily in the cloud. Uh, taking advantage of cloud infrastructure then requires them to think about how they make their information available both to their on-premises systems and to the cloud environment where they can run perhaps larger analytic workloads against it or use the cloud services that they would otherwise not have access to. Yeah. Um you know, one of the challenges we've seen is when, when we've got, you know, kind of that, that hybrid or multi-cloud environment, you know, managing my data, you know, you know, kind of the whole, you know, orchestrating, uh, you know, pieces and getting my arms around how, you know, I take care of it and leverage it can be challenging. Um, is that something you guys help with? Are there other partners that get involved? How are, how are customers helping to, you know, sort out and mature these environments? You know, it's a, it's a big question, of course. Yeah. Uh, you, you've touched on the, the management of data as a whole and, yeah. and what that means and how organizations handle that. Uh, Wandisco's role in supporting organizations with those challenges is in ensuring that when they need to take advantage of more than one environment or when they need their data to be available in more than one place, they can do that seamlessly and easily. Uh, what we purport to do and, and what we encourage our customers to do with our technology is rather than 
keeping one copy of data on premises and using it solely there or copying your data to another location in order that you can act upon it there. We treat those environments as the same and say, well, have the best of both worlds. Have your data available in each location. Let your applications use it at local speed and do that without regard to the need for retaining a workflow by which you exchange data between environments. Wandisco's technology can take care of all of that. And to do so, it has to do some very smart things under the covers around consistency and making that work across wide area networks. Makes it particularly suited to cloud environments where we can leverage those underlying capabilities in conjunction with the scale of the cloud, which is a native home for data at scale. Um, can, you, can you give us some, uh, you know, where do you see customers kind of in this maturation? Um, you know, Diane Green uh, made a statement that today, you know, 5% of the data uh, is in the public cloud. So, um, you know, what, what are some of those barriers that are, uh, you know, stopping people from getting more data in the cloud? You know, is it something that, um, you know, we will just see, you know, a, a massive adoption of data in the cloud? Or, you know, what, what's your guys' viewpoint as to, you know, where data is going to live, how, how that, that movement is happening? Yeah, I think longer term, the economic advantages of using cloud environments are uh, undeniable. Uh, the cost advantages of hosting information in the cloud and the benefits that come from the scalability of those environments is uh, certainly far surpassing the capabilities that organizations can invest in themselves through their own data centers. So that natural migration of data to the cloud is a, uh, a common theme that we see across all sorts of organizations. But as many people say, data has gravity. And if the majority of your application information resides today in your own environments or in environments outside of the cloud, whether that's internet connected devices or uh, in points of ingest that reside outside of cloud environments, there's a natural tendency for data to remain in place where they're either ingested or created. Uh, what you need to do to better take advantage of cloud environments then is the ability to uh, easily access that data from cloud infrastructure. So the sorts of organizations that are looking to that are those with either burgeoning problems around uh, consuming data at multiple points. Um, they might operate environments that span multiple contents. They might have jurisdictional restri restrictions around where their data can reside, but need to control its flow between separate environments as well. So Wandisco can certainly help with all of those problems. Uh, the underlying replication technology that we bring to bear is very well suited to it. But we are a part of the overall solution, right? We're not the full answer to everything. We certainly deal very well with replication, and uh, we, we believe we cover that very well. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious, when we talk about kind of the dispersion of data and where it's being created, uh, of course, edge use cases for things like IoT uh, are, are, you know, quite a hot topic at that point. Is that something you guys are touching on yet, uh, gets involved in discussions? Um, you know, where, where does that sit? Yeah, definitely. The interesting thing about Wandisco's approach to data replication is that we base it on this foundation of consistency and uh, using a mathematically approven approach to distributed consensus to guarantee that changes made in one environment are represented in others uh, equally, regardless of where those changes occur. Now, when you apply that to batch-based data storage or streaming environments or other forms of ingest is relatively irrelevant, so long as you have that same underlying capability to guarantee consistency regardless of where changes occur. If you're talking about IoT environments where you naturally have uh, infrastructure sitting outside of the cloud, and this is the type of uh, infrastructure that needs to reside out of the cloud, right? Your edge points where data are captured, where uh, you're consuming information or generating it from uh, devices, perhaps from an, an, uh, an automotive vehicle or from an embedded device, some sort of sensor array, whatever that happens to be. These are the types of environments where it means you're generating data outside of the cloud. So if you're looking to use that inside of uh, the cloud itself, you need some way of moving data around. And you need to do that uh, with some degree of consistency between those environments to make sure you're not just challenged with extra copies of information. Yeah, the, the other you know really interesting topic around data uh, that's being discussed at the, at the Google Cloud event is you know artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning. I'm, I'm curious, are you, your customers involved in that? Uh, you know, wh wh where do you see that kind of on the radar today? Yeah, it's obviously an absolutely critical part of where the IT industry in general is going, and, and the type of solution that's fed off data. Right, these systems are uh, better as your data set grows. Uh, the more information you have, the, the better they work, and the more capable they become. And it's certainly uh, an aspect of how well uh, machine learning techniques and artificial intelligence approaches have been adopted in the industry, and uh, the rapid rate of change in, in that side of IT 
is driving a lot of the demand for increasing access to data sets. Uh, we see some of our customers using that for uh, really interesting things. You might have seen some of the uh, recent news around our involvement in a research project led through the University of Sheffield, looking to use data sets captured from a variety of research institutions and uh, medical environments to solve the problem of identifying and responding to uh, dementia. And uh, it's, it's a great outcome from that type of environment uh, through which machine learning techniques are being applied across data sets. What you find, though, is that because there's a large set of institutions sharing access to data, no single data set is sufficient to support those outcomes, regardless of what intelligence you can place against the machine learning models that you build up. So by enabling the ability to bring those data sets together, have them available in a single location, being the cloud, where larger models can be uh, assessed against the data sets, means much better outcomes for those types of environments. Okay, uh, Paul, in, in your role uh, of product management, how, how do you keep, we, we went through, you know, some of the hot buzz terms out there. Uh, how do you help the company, you know, identify those trends focused on the ones that are important, uh, you know, that, that to your customers and the kind of feedback loops that you get from them? Yeah, I guess a lot of, uh, a lot of work in the end is how we do it. But uh, we need to listen to customers directly, of course, understand what they are looking to do with their information systems, uh, what they're uh, aiming for, their goals at a business level, what type of value that they want to get out of their data, and how they're approaching that. That's, that's really critical. Uh, we also need to look to the industry in general. Right? Uh, we're obviously in a very rapidly changing environment where uh, uh, technologies, uh, the organizations that uh, build IT systems, are increasingly adopting uh, new approaches and building systems that simply weren't available uh, days ago. Uh, look at the announcements from Google of late around their uh, video intelligence APIs as a service, uh, their image APIs as well, all new capabilities that organizations today now have access to. So bringing those things together, understanding where the general IT trends are, how that applies to our customers, and what Wandisco can do with the unique value that we bring is really key to the, the product management role. All right, Paul, uh, you know, you've been at the show. Curious, any cool things you saw, interesting customer conversations that may want to you know, give our audience a flavor of you know, what's going on, why 10,000 people are excited to you know, be at the event? Yeah, well, it is a very exciting event. Um, just the scale of uh, these types of uh, events run by Google and uh, similar organizations is, is something in itself to behold. Uh, we're really excited to be a part of that. Uh, the things that are really interesting for me out of the show tend to be where we see customers or opportunities coming to us, uh, identifying challenges that they can't address without the type of technology that we bring to bear. Uh, those tend to be areas where either they're looking to do migration from on-premises systems into the cloud, which is obviously very strong interest for Google themselves. They need to bring customers in to take better advantage of the services that they have. Uh, Wandisco can play a strong role in that. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interesting things around the edge too. So all of the ways in which data can be used are uh, always exciting and interesting to see. Uh, the combination of technologies like artificial intelligence, like virtual reality, uh, the type of work that Wayne Disco does also is certainly going to bring forward, I think, a, a new wave of applications and systems that we just hadn't considered uh, even a few years ago. Yeah, uh, lots of really interesting things. There's personal assistants at home uh, and personal assistants that are listening. OK, Google, subscribe to Silicon Angle on YouTube. We'll be back with lots more coverage here uh, from The Cube talking about Google Next 2017. You're watching The Cube. Uh -huh.